What's up, everybody? Welcome to a very sleepy Sunday for me. Uh, we usually start out talking about our week. It's been it's one. It's bright outside. It's bright outside. How could it be sleepy? How could it be a sleepy Sunday? Man, have, have you ever dealt with flood damage before? I never have yes. until this past week. Oh, okay. So they say it's awesome to live close to work, and it is for the most part because your commute's short. But when a storm hits that area and your house is four minutes from work, there's a possibility both places could get flooded, and that's what happened to me this last week. So, oh, uh, woke up on Tuesday to messages from my uh, from the owner of my company saying, "Hey, I think the office got flooded. Can you check it out?" Six inches of water across the first floor of our office building, and then Jeez. as I'm going downstairs to get ready to go check out the office, I step downstairs in the basement. Squish, 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 whole basement's flooded. So. Wow. I had to shoot out of there and, and shop back my entire basement Tuesday morning, then come over to the office, and I was working on cleaning the office for the next three days. So, uh, oh, man, it sucks. I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah, I bet, man. Yeah. Uh, I am not. An, you should get an extra day off. It should give you Monday off. Tuesday, you would think. The problem is, all the time I spent cleaning the office, the, my other stuff wasn't getting done. So, I actually probably have to put more hours in on Monday. Uh, uh, yeah, don't believe what they tell you, kids. You don't want to grow up. You don't want to grow up. There's nothing good about it. <laughs> Really isn't, and you and you don't, and you and you want to leave that job to do movies full time. What's wrong with you? I know. Why would I leave that paradise to watch movies all the time and write <laughs> about them, and talk and, and talk with my buddies on the uh, on the internet? I mean, that seems stupid. Who would want to do that? That seems stupid. <laughs> uh, welcome everybody to Cinema Royale. This is not uh, custodial talk. This is uh, <laughs> this is uh, tra Travis and John Noel here talking movies. Uh, we are the Punch Drunk Critics, or two other Punch Drunk Critics. Um, I was just thinking we should start a stream like a like a like a Twitch group. Yeah. For for, for film critics who are also uh, gamers. Yeah, I mean that, that that Venn diagram has to cross over quite a bit. So Well, I was I was I was on there last night and there's a there's a group for just pro wrestlers who are gamers. There's a whole bunch of them. Oh really? And they have their own little group. But you know, I was like, we should probably do one for film critics that are also gamers. Like I, I don't know how many of them there will be, but I'm sure there's some. I mean, you know, you know, critics, we love a chance to promote ourselves. So if we set up the group and call some people in. I'm sure we'll get some. Yeah, I think we could do that. I might, I might actually look into that once I reach the point where I can create a team. That's a good idea. I'm not, yeah, I'm not there. I'm not, I'm not quite there yet. I'm still I'm still building my my group. I haven't quite got to 50 followers yet. I'm, I'm getting there. Well, and that's uh, cinematic underscore enforcer or just enforcer? Underscore. Cinematic underscore, underscore enforcer. enforcer. So make sure you uh, uh, you uh, follow Travis on Twitch with that name. Um, we were talking last week or something, and this is going to go into inside baseball business, but uh, doing a couple contests or something like that to get people oh, on the train. So we need to we need to get that done. I think I got some we're stuff definitely going to do some, We're definitely going to do some contests on there once we reach a certain point. Right. Um, but, yeah, that's, a, that's absolutely a must to do stuff like that. Um, it's been fun though. I've been enjoying the stream. It's been it's been a lot of fun. Is it an, let me ask? Is it like an outlet for you? Like I know I know you get some real talk going on there and and movie talk and all kinds of stuff. Is it sometimes? Is it, yeah, sometimes I do talk movies on there, but I talk a lot of wrestling on there too and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's been kind of fun. But mostly I just enjoy playing the games. Yeah, I've been playing, playing Overwatch. So and I was playing some Knights of the Old Republic on there, but it's the because it's a it's on Xbox. You yeah, know, it's been converted. It's it's a little buggy, so I kind of stopped. Oh, but, uh, but I might I might play a little bit more once I get to Nice Old Republic too. Uh, I'll I'll do that one on there. But um, but yeah, it's been fun. It's been good. I, I enjoy it. I just uh, I wish I had more time to do it. I know, you right? Know? Like I can't be one of those consistent streamers that has like a day and time they do like a full schedule. Like they know when they're going to be on every time, and they're always yeah. there. Can't do that, man. My schedule's too bonkers, even with us stuck at home. So and that's the that's the true test, right there. Is even when we're in quarantine, it's still ridiculously all over the place. Yeah, it's the same. Nothing's changed. <laughs> uh, but it's been it's been kind of a busy week. Uh, a lot of stuff came out this week in terms of movies: Palm Springs, mm -hmm. uh, Greyhound, The Old Guard, Relic. Those are four big movies that came out this week. Right. Um, last couple of weeks, maybe last three weeks, we've had a lot of really big movies that were either supposed to come out this year in theaters um, or whatever. And it, a lot of them have kind of landed on streaming services and on digital because of, you know, because of everything that's been going on. And over the last like three weeks, there's been a lot of them I'm going back to like 
Irresistible and stuff like that. There's been just a lot of these movies. And this week there was a bunch of them. Right. Um, so it was really busy. Plus I had that interview with uh, Gina Prince Bythewood and, and Kiki Lane that I did, which you can find on the site right now uh, as well. So it's been, it's been kind of nuts this week. Yeah. Uh, but fun. Not not overwhelming so. Overwhelmingly so. And actually, I don't think I have any reviews for next week. So I might actually get some time away for the first time in what seems like ages. Well, we'll see. The last time I said that, I ended up with like four reviews that week. Yeah, I don't know why you even said it out loud. But I know, probably I probably put some, some bullshit into the atmosphere now. And now I'll probably I'll look at my actual schedule and be like, oh. Well, what, what are your plans for as a perennial Comic Con attendee? What are your plans for the virtual con this year? Or what are you well, What are you thinking about it? I mean, I'm I'm signed up as press for it, um, but as far as I can tell, I don't know what they're if they're doing anything specific for press anyway. Yeah, it just seems like it'll be open. Yeah. You know, yeah. Zooms basically this, but with uh, with celebrities or panels. Yeah, that's what it seems like. They're, like everything's going to have like a specific link. Mm-hmm. Which you click on to go to uh, Kevin Smith is doing something. Um, I think he's going to be sh- debuting footage from his upcoming movie, Kill Joy, or whatever it is. Oh, uh, they, um, yeah, kill he's, something. Yeah, he's ki- Kill Joy's right. It's um, it's yeah. that dude that everybody was big in World War Two that I, I can't describe it, but yeah, um, yeah, he's, he's going to be showing footage from that. Uh, but there's no Warner Brothers, there's no Marvel Studios at all. Mm-hmm. So they were they just like released a Saturday and Sunday schedule and it looks bleak yeah. compared to how it used to be. You know how it is when you're there at Comic Con when mm-hmm. Saturday is the most anticipated day. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's nothing there's nothing like that. There's no Warner Brothers or Marvel. So there's like oh well, what are we here for? I don't know what looking at the schedule. Like normally on on Comic Con weekends on Comic Con years, I would um I would post the schedule like every day like that they, every day they put it out. I'd post the schedule. Like these are the things to look forward to. I don't have anything on there that I'm seriously looking forward to. I mean, I think this is one of the true. You know, a lot of people have been saying, "Oh, well, they're doing all stuff virtually, and it's really showing how how the virtual world can change and keep things going, and maybe they'll do this for the, going forward." I think Comic Con is going to be one of those things that says you can do something, but you can't do this. I mean, it's not yeah. going to be the same. I mean, even if you, as somebody who's never been, that's always wanted to go. Even not being there, knowing it's the going year on. you were going to go, COVID hits. Yeah. And so I'm sorry, everybody. This is all my fault. I started saving money for something I haven't done for the last 10 years. And oh, man. here it's we are. Fault. You know what you should do now? You should go to Sundance instead. That's that's actually a good idea. If it if it, I actually haven't touched that savings money that I had. So that's, uh, that's a good idea. You should idea. go to Sundance instead. Assuming, because they've already announced a sort of hybrid festival of like, online and stuff that's going to be like at multiple locations outside of utah mm-hmm. might not need to go anywhere for that either so i mean i don't know, well, <laughs> you know, you know and, and that's, that's the thing is i hope they use this stuff it's fine to do that but i hope it's as something to to increase um you know availability you don't change the core thing uh in the future when it's safe to do so you but you can certainly learn from this to add on to it and make it a little more accessible for everybody it's not going to dip your numbers people aren't going to say oh well, I can watch the uh, you know the Marvel panel online. I don't need to go there because if you're if you're going there, it's it's about the the floor. It's about all the big set pieces they have out and all the cool stuff and being around all those people, um, smelly as it might be, um, to see that. I mean, I don't want these things to get too available. I like the exclusivity of it too. So yeah, um, you know, but uh, that's that's partially the selfish part of me that want, that likes it mm-hmm. because I can get into those things. But but. I mean, I don't know. They lose some value when everybody can go and do the same thing. Everybody can go and do the same thing. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, the exclusivity. To, but if, if what everybody can do is see the panels. I mean, the panels, they, they'll never really do that because, you know, they, they always have some clip or something they're not showing to the public, so they won't show that. But, you yeah. know, put putting some of the, you know, CW panels online or whatever is, yeah. is fine. But and the thing is, most of those things are become available online anyway. Like yeah. I mean, most of those things, they put them online anyway, but they'll edit out like any footage that they show. Right. Right. Yeah. Like the Marvel panels, like every single one of them has been online. Mm-hmm. You can find them all, uh, but they'll cut out like the part where they show the, like a trailer for something that no one else got to see. Right. Like that, like that very first Black Panther trailer that they showed, 
that no one has still ever seen. Like it just never came out. <laughs> it Did never that never out. come out? That never, the very first one they ever showed, the very first footage of it, which I remember being there for it. They never, they never put it out. Ryan Coogler had begged people in the theater, please, in, in, in all age, please don't, don't, uh, don't put this out there. And, and that was like the listened. one time, the one time where people actually didn't do it. Like they didn't put it out there. No one did. It never came out. And it was mostly the the, the car chase and the, the fight scene at the casino. Mm -hmm. um, it's mostly what it was. And it, and it was like, we were like, everybody was blown away, of course. Oh, yeah. 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 But the, that that trailer never came out. The one that they eventually put out by Panther was completely different. Wow. Totally different. So. I didn't, rare, I didn't know it. I didn't know that ever actually. But I mean, I remember the most rare. secretive one that I saw was the Mandalorian, um, and even that. I mean, it, and it was only the most secretive because the footage that leaked was exceptionally crappy. Um, yeah, because it, it was somebody. It was somebody sitting in a seat somewhere. Right. Yeah. yeah with their cell phone sneaking yeah. video. So. Yeah. But um. So like you mentioned, it, it has been a, a, a busy week. Um. And for all I was doing, like I talked about with that flooding, I actually watched. I had a lot of couch time. I guess probably because I had the excuse of cleaning up after that stuff when I came home to tell my kids daddy's not playing today and, and my wife let me sit on the couch. But, you know, like you mentioned, the old guard, Palm Springs, Greyhound, um, and, uh, you know, a bunch of stuff coming out. But I, I something else happened over this week uh, that I just wanted to touch on real quick because I don't think yeah. it had really happened yet when we talked last week. Um, okay. So we talked about Hamilton last week, and I had yep. the, the, the soundtrack stuck in my head on uh, Sunday up to Monday. And I was like, you know, let me, I'll watch a couple minutes of it, get it stuck out. And then I've watched it two more times since then. I hate being the guy that's that late to the party and is all about something after, three, four, five years after it's out there. Yeah. Like, Damn, that's a good show. And did we talk at all about the backlash against it uh, last week? No. So... Just what are your thoughts on? I've, on... I've, I've totally ignored it because it okay. sounds stupid. Uh, what is the backlash? The backlash is just basically saying that since the people that are portrayed were slave owners, they should only be portrayed as slave owners and they shouldn't have a, uh, um, uh, a play about them, basically. Or because even those that weren't, I mean, weren't fighting against it. I, you know, as much as I am in support of this movement to. Uh, contextualize and confront uh, this country's racist history. Uh, we're doing it more now than I think we have at any point in my life. Like mm -hmm. right now. Um, you don't have to do it for every goddamn thing. <laughs> the thing about the thing about Hamilton is the very nature of it is an answer to all of that. Right. The very nature of it by putting people of color in these positions as the founding fathers of this country is an answer to all of that. You mm -hmm. don't need to go an extra step. Right. You don't need to do it. I don't, I don't see the point. Um, the, <laughs> it, it just, you know, and I, I, I don't like it when people use the term count, cancel culture. I think that's dumb. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it, it, it demeans what is, I think a very real need to, to uh to be against and to turn against uh things that are hateful right um because cancel culture is is always against something that is hateful yeah yeah <laughs> it's like people who want to cancel jk rowling well jk rowling's being a real bitch right now mm. and to, to like trans to trans people i don't care if you cancel her go ahead the way she's acting stuff like that yeah. You know, it's like, it's always against something that is hateful, which I'm totally against. Mm -hmm. I'm totally for it. Please be, please be, please cancel those things as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. But when you, call, when you label it hashtag cancel culture and you start getting all upset about it, um, uh, it just, it, 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 it demeans the entire, the entire, the entire thing. Yeah. But, you don't need, you just, but Hamilton, you don't need to do, you don't need to go an extra step. Um, like I said, the very nature of it, of what Lin Manuel Miranda was doing, was in response to this country's entire history of being for white men about white men, history created by white men. Right. <laughs> and that's that's kind of. We don't need to do more. That's kind of where I, I was, but I, I like asking those them people these kind aren't of questions. thinking about Hamilton. Those people aren't really thinking about what Hamilton means. They're right. just looking at it as solely solely as a play. 
Mm -hmm. solely as a show. That's all they're doing is looking at it solely through that lens. They're not actually thinking about what Hamilton is. Right. Yeah, and that's that's kind of where my thoughts were. But I, you know, uh, my my perspective is skewed on these things, and I know a lot of people out there are probably the same as same as me and, and want a little bit more information to see how it how it is throughout uh, for other people. So I figured I'd bring yeah. that up real quick. But yeah. we've spent a lot of time on stuff like that over the last couple of weeks. So let's talk about something. Not that not that it's too much time, or not that we it doesn't deserve it. But let's talk about something fun. We both saw. I know you saw the old guard before I did. Yeah. And. Um, I'm curious. You probably already know that I love that movie. I uh, yeah. I think it's great. I mean, my review has been up for over a week. Uh, talked about it a lot this week. Like I guess I talked to Gina Prince Bythewood and Kiki Lane about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a really fun interview. Um, but I'm curious to know what you thought of the old guard now that you've seen it. Oh, I mean, I loved it. I, I loved it. I thought it was great. And you know, I think it's the best of the action movies that they've done. Netflix. Yeah, I think it's the best one they've had. Yeah, and Extraction was really good, too. And it's there's not really parallels, but the structure of the movie, uh, specifically, you know, the, the end credit scene almost mirrors the same. You can tell they're trying to build, uh, not universes, but franchises out of these um, these uh, yeah. films. But the thing Netflix that struck has, me... Netflix has made a turn. They turned a corner. Uh, before, they were just trying to... In the beginning, they were just trying to make movies to show that they can make movies. And then they were making... Then they wanted to make prestige movies you know so you mm -hmm. had your romas and your and your um uh the irishmans right and i would say probably since about uh that horrible cloverfield movie that they bought um they've tried they've oh oh yeah yeah the space one Cloverfield paradox or whatever it was mm -hmm. which is which is really bad um they've been trying to build franchises Mm -hmm. Now, I think they realized they couldn't do that by buying other people's refuse like Cloverfield. Right. But they they could do it by bringing in top filmmakers and making movies that you would generally see in a theater, mm -hmm. uh, which is why you got movies like Extraction and, and why you got movies like The Old Guard um, and why you got movies like Bird Box, which is what you're talking about doing a sequel to. Um these are these would be blockbuster movies in a theater and netflix is bringing them to you and uh they've turned that corner now to trying to do to focus on that and building franchises and all three of those movies i just mentioned bird box extraction and the old guard are will be franchises like they're already looking like franchises one movie in for each of them right they're like they're going to be building into something more um that's where netflix is at right now and i and i'm, I'm here for it i like it uh so far oh, yeah. And for in terms of those three movies, they're three for three. Um, you know, they're not they're not batting a hundred for all their movies, but uh, but those three, yeah, they're doing. When they good. really yeah. swing, they they tend to hit. And the thing about Old Guard is that whereas it's, whereas Extraction could yield a sequel or two, um, same with uh, Bird Box, this has a, the chance to be a real uh, universe type deal, just based on the premise of it. Uh, for anybody that hasn't seen it or hasn't read the premise, essentially they're they're immortal mercenaries that that have fought through time they don't know really why they're immortal but they're immortal um and i don't they, need to know that either i don't want to know what do you mean i don't want why they are why yeah no i don't i don't need to know why they i are. don't want a sequel to delve into the origin of their of their race no i wouldn't or, want that whatever they are i, I don't want, want anything like that i don't want to know please yeah. don't <laughs> i, I say don't treat it that. treat it like assassin's creed like give me give me a, a um uh the old guard uh spanish civil war i mean the old guard medieval times you know because they established that charlize theron's character is over two thousand years old in the film um and it it's just a really this movie hit on a lot of different levels um you know with with the the climate of today they managed to address a lot of uh you know the diversity and um and inclusion uh points that have been missed in other places without hitting you over the head with it which i think is is uh, important because nobody wants to be included. You don't want to be have um, you know an LGBTQ character and say, "Hey, look, here's our gay guy." You know, it's just it's a it's a person that's that's on the cast that you don't really you, you don't yeah. s spare them out because of that. They're there because yeah. that's how it is in the real world. Well, this is, a, this is this one of the things that, that the old guard does really well. And to expand on sort of what the movie's about for those who haven't seen it, and judging by the. the insane reaction people had to my review there's a 
bunch of people out there who were really eager for this movie. Mm -hmm. um, I told Gina that I was uh, surprised and shocked by the level of response to that review in particular. Right. Like people were, were going nuts, not for my review necessarily, but for the movie. Right. Uh, wanting to see it so bad. Um, but to expand on what the the premise is, they're, they're immortal mercenaries fighting the good fight. They're not like bad guys. They're fighting the good fight. And, you know, like I said, Andromachus, which is um, Andy, uh, Shelley's their own character, has been around for a couple thousand years. But that team has been around for together for almost as long. And uh, they finally have, like, a real threat to their lives come in, come in at the same time that they discover a new member of their group or their tribe, I guess you could say, right. by Peaky Lane, who's a, an ex-Marine in the film uh, named Niall. And uh, so they got all these things coming at them at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, the characters you're referring to, there's a couple of characters in, in the team that are that are gay. And one of the things this movie does really well, because there's a billion movies about immortals and you know how living a long life isn't all it's cracked up to be you know everybody everybody's done that story this is the first time in a long time that I've, that I've seen one that actually makes me feel like yeah being immortal could really kind of suck yeah. um the two gay characters uh one played by marwan kanzari uh from aladdin um they you gotta imagine in their situation they've been lovers together for hundreds of years you think being gay is in being isn't tolerated by people now yeah uh imagine how it was across millennia well uh, even and past then, that they met in the crusades on opposite sides of the lord you know exactly. that's like the worst time exactly and you know and but going through hundreds of years of intolerance has forged this bond with them that is utterly unbreakable right and they have a really fantastic scene there's one scene that almost made me cry in the movie when uh, one guy's professing his love for the other um it's like, really, this is your boyfriend is this your boyfriend or something like that that seems like yeah. yeah well one is being tortured basically but um but uh but it's it's a really fantastic moment and this movie does a really great job of individualizing each character putting their immortality into context what it means to that specific character right um like all of them are they're different people they all have different outlooks on what their immortality means Right. And I think it's one of the great things about it. And then you put that into the context of Kiki Lane's character, who's brand new to it and doesn't understand anything about what being living a, a forever means. It's a lot of stuff in there. And then you manage to put in there some really great action scenes like that fight between Kiki Lane and Shoei's Theron on the plane is really oh, yeah. fantastic. Um, uh, the only complaint I had about the movie is that the villain kind of sucks um you know the, his, and his motivation is is while i understand it it's pretty weak and the it's guy playing generic movie, and you know that was dudley Durs dursley right? it is dudley no, it's, it is it's dudley totally dudley yeah it's harry, Mel it's harry melling it's him but um but it's just that the character doesn't do doesn't really do much for me yeah i never, right. I never felt like a threat like at any point to me so yeah and, um, and he kind of came off a little and, and i'm with you almost to the letter i mean my only downside was was the villain and honestly in movies like this i the villain to me is something that can can elevate a film but it, it doesn't really hurt it as much when it's a straight action movie because you kind of ex or at least i kind of expect the default generic bad guy they, and, and they that's need what he a was. physical threat they need a physical threat for like the sequel yeah but he, he didn't right. even like uh they didn't even give him like in in venom another movie that had had issues um you know the bad guy there you felt like he really wanted to help at the end of the day um, even though he was doing being evil to do it, whereas uh, the Dudley Dursley in the uh, in the old guard, he just seems like he's evil because he wants those profits. He runs a pharma company. He wants to figure yeah. out what's going which on. Which is which is you know which is real. I mean, there was a yeah. if there was a Martin Scarelli type who found out that there was a oh god, <laughs> you remember him though? He looks yeah, he looks about as creepy as Martin Scarelli. Right. I mean, he actually does. He looks he looks a little bit like Martin Scarelli. But if there was a Martin Scarelli type who discovered. Uh, something similar to this. Do I doubt for a second that he would do the same thing? No, no. absolutely not. <laughs> so I mean, so his motivation, I get, and it's 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 it strikes home. I get it. It's mm -hmm. just the character itself didn't really do much for me. And you know, he, like he had his road for his right hand man who was a little bit was sort of like his physical, his you know did, did the physical stuff for him. 
Mm -hmm. he, you know, he just kind of showed up out of nowhere. He didn't really mean much. Right. Um, they need like a real serious threat, like somebody who's been hunting their kind for generations or something. So they need something like that. A Kurgan, you know? if you will. Right. Exactly. They need something like that. But I don't want this to turn into Highlander either. Right. No, no. Like, you I, gotta, you like, I don't want it. Right. I don't want to discover that there have been thousands of them, like in some, like on some other country somewhere, or, or, <laughs> or yeah. there, are, there are thousands of them scattered around the country somewhere. I don't. I don't want that. Part of the thing that makes it special is that this feels like this is all of it. Like this. Yeah. Is it. Like this is all there is. Like these five or six people. Like, that's all there is. And like, the mystery the discovery of it. The it's discovery so of Kiki Lane's character is, is like a big deal. Like she's like the first one in like a few hundred years. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to stay like that, stay unique like that. Oh, absolutely. Now I, mean, I have an idea in my head about what they could do. That would be awesome. Well, I mean, like, I think I think the um, oh wait, you, you mean for the sequel or or yeah, the, for the sequel? I mean, I I think that was one of the, and I, I don't want to spoil anything here, um, but let's just say the one thing about immortality that people don't really think of when you look at these movies is is what your most horrible possible fate could be if you couldn't die and they kind of address that in this and yeah. that's, that's really all i'll say and it plays into everything there and, there are god that there is, are fates there are fates worse than death for somebody yeah. who can't die and and i'll tell you there are very few movies make me squirm or like have a, a visceral effect on me just like jesus oh like but the more i thought about that the worse that, that it became um and there, there's just so much. This, I mean, you mentioned um, you mentioned uh, Gina. Uh, how do you, what's her last Gina name? Prince, Gina Prince Bythewood. There you go. Uh, director. She's a director of movie. movie. What's her that? First real action movie. Is her, uh, the one who did you know Love and Basketball and Beyond the Lights. Right. And this isn't hers. Her first real action movie. She's supposed to do that silver and black, silver sable and black cat movie for Spider Man, but they, that doesn't seem to. Or it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Well, I mean, the first real action movie. That's the second part of what what I was speaking to, as far as the role this plays in in in, in uh, enhancing diversity and things like that is, is action movie directing. We we've had female action stars. It's always been a hard fought battle, and and there have been many, but uh, directing action films has been few and far between for female directors. I mean, you have um, uh, man, I'm blanking today. The Punisher Warzone. Uh, what's her name? Lexi Alexander. Lexi Alexander. You know, you have a couple like that, but. Uh, you, you always know, this... make fun of me because I always say her name first whenever we, we talk about. Yeah, you do. I, I, that's why I was kind of pissed that I couldn't remember it. But um, you know, this <laughs> this feels just like any other movie, as as it you know obviously would. It's just directing is not a gender specific thing, but um, you know, it it takes it to stand up with the best of action movies now. But then there's Charlize Theron, who, as I mean, this is obvious to everybody, but as I was thinking about it, I was like, man, what a weird trajectory for a career. Like she went to the A-list dramatic actress Oscar winner thing and then went into the action movies and has become just as 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 uh, effective as that. But it seems like she's almost, I don't want to say going backwards because that in, implies a negative thing, but she has become in her mid-40s uh, a, a first-rate action star. And, uh, you know, between Atomic Blonde and this only, uh, you don't even have to put anything else in there, it, it, that should put her up there. It's just impressive that she's able to do all sides Max, of the of, of, of the stage. What? Mad, Mad, Mad Max. Mad Max. Yeah, yeah. That um, was the that was the role that really did it in terms of making her an elite action star. Was that she? Remember they tried to turn her into an action star early in her career with like Eon Flux. You know they, they tried to. I was saying Eon Flux, but then no, I was thinking Ultra. Violet. I knew she was in that. I was mixing Ultra her Violet Ultra. Was, yeah, Ultra Violet 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 Violet. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, they tried to turn her into an action star early on, and it didn't really take. Uh, then it didn't help that Eon Flux is a bad movie. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I mean, uh, Mad Max that was 2015. Mm -hmm. That that really did it. And then of course, Atomic Blonde was 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 had some great action sequences. I don't think it's a great movie. Um, had some really good action though. Mm -hmm. Um, and then this, uh, she's just been you know of course she also did Fate of the Furious. So she shouldn't leave that out either. Um. Yeah, I'll leave it out. Huh? <laughs> I'll leave it out just because I came on the other day and I just that haircut she was rocking it. I don't know. It's also possibly the worst of the Fanta, uh, uh, Fast and Furious movies. It's really bad. Right. <laughs> Fate of Furious is really bad. Yeah. Even by like, like you can forgive anything uh, Fast and Furious standards. Yeah, that well, that that was the one it's that uh, really Jason Statham lame. has the baby on the plane, right? Is that the same one? What? 
Or is that the sequel? That's the one. That's the one where where Vin Diesel and The Rock wouldn't do any scenes together. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. Because they were beefing. Yeah. <laughs> so they had to like like navigate the script around that. It was just stupid. <laughs> it's just a dumb movie. So all uh, in all, <laughs> I'd say the old guard is a go for your action movie pick on uh, Netflix this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. The old guard is definitely a go. Uh, I'm pretty sure most people by now have already watched it. Most right. people I know who, who are looking forward to it have already watched it. So right. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 a really great film. I, I, I can't wait for them to do more, and I know they will. I did ask Kiki and Gina if they will come back for sequels. They're both uh, tight lips. People watch it. So, um, so uh, jumping over to Hulu, uh, Andy Samberg, who until Please I watched, tell me you watched this. Yeah, I did. Until okay. I saw Brooklyn Nine Nine, I Thanks. could not stand Andy Samberg. I don't know what it was about it. I like, still can't stand Andy Samberg. I took heat on Twitter because I had tweeted how much I love Palm Springs despite Andy Samberg. Yeah. And <laughs> and I got a lot a lot of replies from Andy Samberg fans and fan groups that were not happy with that me saying that. But you know, I I don't like the guy. I just don't find him very funny. Well, but, when, but I'll tell you, really like him in Palm Springs. The thing about which, him is in it, in Brooklyn Nine Nine is the only time that he's really likable when he's he's goofy, he's childish, but he's also heartfelt and he's he's serious at times. Um, and you kind of get that into it. And yeah, whatever. But uh, you know, it, it's it's when he's God what, damn it! Every and every every funny white man can play that role. I, I don't know. He's 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 exceptionally good. At it. Um, where he really where he really rubs me the wrong way is when he's trying to be Adam Sandler, or I should say Billy Madison Jr. You know, he's trying to he's trying too hard. Like his Parks and Rec arc, most almost all of his uh, his bits on Saturday Night Live, uh, you know, Hot Hot Rod. These are all things where he's trying too hard, and I gotta it comes hate out. Hot Rod. I hated that movie so bad. Huh? Yeah, but that was one of those I wanted to walk out of, but I didn't. Um, Palm Springs though is brilliant and let's not forget so, so palm, palm springs played at sundance this year mm-hmm. and i purposely avoided it because it was andy sandberg and i felt bad because everyone there said you should go see palm springs you should go see palm springs and then it turned out to be the highest selling film ever in the history of sundance like 17 and a half million bucks uh by who and neon which is a wow. lot of money um neon is awesome it. i love those guys yeah Hulu is doing some really good stuff too, mm-hmm. um, and the movie and plus the premise to me sounded like, you know, it sounded like something I could take it or leave. You know, it was like okay. How many Groundhog Day uh, movies do you need? Yeah, no, I know. I was like, I, I, it doesn't excite me anymore to hear people say it's a Groundhog Day esque premise. Like that mm-hmm. doesn't do anything for me anymore because everybody does it. But this is a really different take on it, and it, you know, it stars Andy Samberg as a guy who's stuck on a time loop in a time loop doing the same day over and over again, except. Mm-hmm. It's out, it's on the day of a wedding, and it's not even his wedding. It's it's somebody else's wedding that, he, that he's attending, right? Uh, you know, and Christian Milioti plays uh plays someone who's there at the wedding as well, who also gets stuck uh, in the time loop. And uh, the way she gets stuck in the time loop is really funny too. Um, but uh, and that's something. This is something that we haven't seen before, and it's not so much about trying to like reverse events or stop somebody from doing something. It's about falling in love in, in this kind of situation and it's it's really interesting uh you know i, I did not expect i was going to like it but i just found it to be really really sweet and funny and their interactions with each other were just brilliant right and i didn't expect i didn't expect to like the movie as much as i did it, especially for something it's so short it's like 90 minutes it's like less than 90 minutes it's a quick get in and get out you enjoy yourself and if there were a movie that I think was like perfect for the summer, it would be this. It would be yeah. this movie. This would yeah. be a great summer movie to watch, like a drive-in right now, to go and watch it. Oh yeah, especially a drive-in at the beach where because that's I don't know if they actually even do this, but I, I know rich people do this in their house. You get that inflatable screen, you project your outside, <laughs> you sit in the pool and watch it, uh, kind of like they're doing up in the corner there. Um, yeah, it's like I said, Groundhog Day thing has really I don't know why, but it it. It yeah. sparks my anxiety whenever, whenever they do these repetitive day things. Um, yeah. I will say this this really didn't, like, you know, they always, like, the, the first time they go through the day, it's the full day. And the next time, it's 80% of the day. And then, then it's just little bits of the day as they go on. As long as they make that transition to little bits of the day quickly, I'm good. Um, 
I did think it was it was more sweet than I than I thought it was going to be. I'm not putting that as a bad thing. It's just it was a little different than I expected. Um, but that being said, uh, it is kind of the perfect little mix of summer movie, romantic comedy, with a little bit of, of lean on the comedy that uh, that I think you know as a date movie will will definitely work out. Yeah, and and I think in terms in terms of uh, showing the evolution of a character who's kind of um, who could come off as problematic, which Andy Samberg's character is, because he's, mm. you know, I mean, he, he's doing the same thing over and over again, but he's kind of taking advantage of the situation to some degrees. Um, right. Wouldn't, wouldn't we all? I mean, not in the ways he does, but. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> um, but it could be problematic. Yeah, I was sure. thinking, I was thinking about, I guess what I'm, what I'm thinking about when I say that is there's been, I'm not, this is not necessarily backlash, but I guess a reexamination by Joseph Gordon-Levitt of, of 500 Days of Summer. Yeah. Um, you know, because his character, you know, his character is really obsessive over Zoe Deschanel's character in that movie. Mm. And, you know, and that was my favorite movie of that year, and I still love that movie. To death. I actually remember you really liking that movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I adore that movie. Um, you know, there's been, and he sort of re-examined it and talked about how, like, you know, the villain in that movie wasn't her, it was him. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't know if that's a context that we had back then when we were watching it. We, we watch it, you kind of look at her and you're like, why won't she be with him? Yeah. You know, and you know and it's kind of like, you know, but but the thing is, the thing is about that movie um, and why the, the reexamination of it is, is interesting is because I always felt one of the things that made that movie great mm-hmm. was that at the end, it kind of comes around to that position. Like, yeah. It kind of comes around to that position that. You know, in fact, it does come around that position. No kind of about it. Not that he's necessarily a villain or a bad guy, but that her feelings are to be respected. You know, he's not respecting her feelings at all throughout that movie. Yeah, she's not a game to win. She's not a trophy. Right. She's not. She's not a prize or anything like that. She's a person. Um, and the movie eventually comes around to that of him mm-hmm. recognizing that. So yeah. it, does, it, didn't, it didn't feel like it needed to be a movie, a movie that needed to necessarily be re-examined. And I don't necessarily think it needs to be. He needs to be placed as his character needs to be placed in the light of being a bad guy, right? Uh, you know, it but, was just seen from his perspective. And all of us who've been through bad breakups cast the person who broke up with us as the bad guy. Oh yeah, I mean, like one hundred, like one thousand percent of the time, we cast that person as the bad guy, whether they are or not. We may eventually get when we get over it. That's when we realize that 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 we need to respect that. And yeah, that first deal. week or two, there's not, but not at first. Yeah, yeah, no, that's not how it goes. Never how it goes. We all do that. I've done it. You've done it. Everyone's done it. So I don't. <laughs> but but uh, Palm Springs sort of does the same things in some ways. Mm-hmm. You know, because his character goes through a lot, especially when it comes to matters of love. And his character goes through a lot with Christian Milioti's character. Yeah. Um, which I don't want to spoil because it goes through a lot of evolutions over the course of 90 minutes. Yeah. But he could easily be cast as as being somewhat of a similar character. Well, I think if this movie was made 10 or 15 years ago, it would have been the same as 500 Days of Summer. I mean, that's something that took a long time to come around is that kind of dichotomy of the good looking guy versus the uh, ugly guy you know ugly guy does the same things that the good looking guy does good looking guy is sweet and cute the ugly guy's a stalker you know what i mean um and that's always been i mean right down to go back to john cusack and say anything i mean standing outside the house with a with a boom box one of the most iconic um expressions of love in movie and it's basically very creepy and you should get it's the cops called on you yeah it's kind of creepy yeah all those yeah. movies from back then could probably be context like that. Oh yeah, especially, especially if they had John Cusack. In well, the John Hughes movies are especially bad because you have <laughs> you have uh, was I don't know if it's Pretty in Pink or Sixteen Candles where Anthony Michael Hall basically date rapes a girl, um, and yeah. that basically he does, you know. Yeah, um, candles. Yeah, yeah it's it, those reexam. John Joseph Gordon Levitt's really smart for that because uh, he's he's I'm not doubting his sincerity, but uh, even if not. He's he's beating the beating everybody else to the punch for the the day where somebody doesn't have something to write and they re-examine Somebody that. will go yeah somebody will ten years from now or something will go and rewatch Five Hundred Days of Summer and 
call that joint out. Cancel 500 Days of Summer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that movie from 2006 or yeah. whatever. They're just gonna, everybody's just going to start doing that for everything. You're going to have a lot of people coming out and saying things. So, uh, man. But um, I, it's we're, amazing that it's been almost 45 minutes already. And we've talked about two of the movies we want to talk that's, about. I just looked down. I was like, shit, we're going to get to Greyhound. Let's kind of breeze through Greyhound. And I don't, yes. we don't really need to talk about Relic. Um, mm -mm. Did you watch Relic? No, I did not. It's on my list. I really wanted yeah. to. I just didn't give it yeah, a chance. I mean, it's, it's, it's very much worth watching. I mean, it's a, it's a ghost story slash movie about dementia with Emily Mortimer and Robin Nevin and Ben Bella Heathcote. Love right. Bella Heathcote. And, and while I'm bringing up uh, how much I love Bella Heathcote, let me ask you a question. Yes. Kristen Milioti. Oh, I like her. Okay, that's all. That was that was the question. That was I, it. I, I did, did not. <laughs> I, like I, was... I, I like how I don't have to actually say anything more. I can just say Kristen Milioti. <laughs> well, I am what I am. You know, whatever whatever happens with hey, that. I was think I was thinking it, so I asked <laughs> it. So I mean, I, it's the same thing for me. I mean, and, I, and, and I never that's... really watched her before. I, I didn't really pay that much attention to her in like The Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, or but, uh, or uh, How I Met Your Mother, and she was right. always I never really paid much attention to her. She always reminded me of Kate Masusi, kind of, um, in a way. Uh, and, but in this, see that. it's it's a different I don't know a different angle on her. And she's she's uh and she's very you know, it's it's her it's her uh, her her personality that drew, drew me in. If I'm being honest, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go we'll go with that. Okay. Yeah, we we'll stick with that. Camilla, <laughs> Camilla Mendez also in the movie. Uh, for anybody that was wondering, hey, she's a she's a piece of fine wine. That one. Um, Which one? Camilla Mendez. Um, oh she plays yeah, Veronica on Riverdale. Yes, she's got a little like underbite that's adorable. I, I don't know what it is about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm digging it. I, we're sitting here talking about not objectifying women and how people are getting on. Here I go. You did that on purpose. Right. Let's move on. Let's Greyhound. talk about let's talk about Greyhound. How hot was what? Tom Hanks? What? How hot was Tom Hanks? See, I can do it for both genders. I'm not. I'm not discriminatory. Yeah, try. What did you think of Greyhound? <laughs> I liked it a lot, but I thought it was going to be a lot different. I don't know why I did. Uh, naval battles are always more cerebral. Um, it's definitely not Saving Private Ryan level. Um, but I do wonder if this was... I know Tom Hanks came out and said something similar, um, but I do He's wonder... very if, disappointed that this was not on the big screen. Yeah, and I wonder if that had some effect on my view in it because it, it, it really, there is a difference. I, I like to think there's not sometimes I can watch something on VHS and enjoy it just as much, but for certain movies, having that huge screen and that high end surround sound really envelops you in something like this. And, and naval battles in particular are so claustrophobic and isolated yeah. uh, that, that I, I normally, being there, normally I love, not necessarily big into like naval movies, but I love mm -hmm. submarine movies. Oh yeah, that's terrifying. You know, right? mm -hmm. Das Boot, U571. I love U571. Right. Um, I even like K19, The Little Maker, and shit like that. I mean, I love those movies. Right. You know what this movie reminded me of? It right. reminded me of a movie from a while back called Enemy at the Gates. I remember and love that movie. And you're right. It is too. similar. Jude yeah. Law, where they're like snipers, whatever. And basically, yeah. it's just man versus man type stuff. Yeah, you're in a war, I, but it's two people. Yeah. Right. This reminded me of that. And I, I, I was not expecting that from Greyhound. Mm hmm. Uh, this movie is 90 minutes of naval battle. Yeah. I mean, there's there's practically nothing else to it. Now, that is actually a detriment in and of itself, that it, that it, there isn't much else to it beyond that. While I found that found the action part of it exciting, and the, there's plenty of it, you know, I, I also found myself wanting to know more about Tom Hanks' character, because he always, like, hint at his faith and stuff mm. like that, and his insecurity, this being his first command, but it didn't really, it didn't take any time to go into any of that stuff, really. Right. Um, and, and like, oh, he's a good man because, you know, he, he talks to the black chef, you know, and stuff like that, which I'm like, you know, I get, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was you know, the 40s. But, but they don't, but they don't, and that would have been fine if they had done something with it, but they don't actually do anything with it. And they don't actually follow up on any of that stuff that they kind of right. hint at. It's just battle, 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 which is, you know, cool in its own way. Um, but this movie was originally for with Sony, and it was supposed to come out in theaters. Mm. And then Apple Apple bought it not that long ago. It's been like maybe two months, like maybe not even that. They paid like seventy five million for it. So they put down a lot of money mm -hmm. to get this movie. I don't know if they were expecting it to possibly be an awards movie or something. You don't usually throw down that kind of money for nothing. 
I just don't, I don't see this being a blockbuster in the summer, um, but. I think if it was, if they had had intentions of putting it out in theaters, they they would have expected it to be a blockbuster, mm -hmm. but it's just, and I don't think it would have been. But um, I, I, Apple was just so desperate for content. They need content for Apple TV Plus so badly. They were willing to put right. out big money for a big name project like this. And this is a big name project mm -hmm. with Tom Hanks in it. I mean, Tom Hanks is really the only star in the movie. Uh, unless you count Elizabeth Shue. I, I always count Elizabeth Shue. I'm sure you do, <laughs> but I don't. Um, so uh, <laughs> as much as I like Elizabeth Shue, I don't count her as a big star. Uh, right. But there's not much more to this movie than that. And that stuff is really exciting. The, the battles are really good. Well, really very well done. Mm -hmm. um, can't remember the name of the guy who directed that thing. Andrew Schmidt. Uh, Schneider. Andrew Schneider. Schneider. Aaron Schneider, uh, who did get and Aaron. Jesus he Christ, did sorry. get low, which I remember seeing at Sundance, I think. Um, this is not the kind of movie you expect from him either. It's a mm. different kind of film for him. But Greyhound, is a, it's a solid movie, and I hate that word, solid, because um, it doesn't really mean anything. It's like interesting. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. But <laughs> but but in terms of like describing it, I guess I will, I, I guess I, in, my, in my review, I descri described it as, as admirable. Cause that's what it is like i like i feel like it does a good job of depicting the heroism of of you know these these world war ii naval captains you know what they what they, what they would risk what they're and up they, against yeah yeah what they're up against what their the, the dangers are i mean i can't think of anything worse than being a, a uh on a on a ship like that with a torpedo coming at me with torpedoes and 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 mines in the water everywhere. I couldn't mm. imagine how frightening the tension that would be. How do you go to that. sleep at night on your bunk right. knowing that at any point? Sleep. Yeah, and that's I mean, so that was the the biggest draw to me was was not the action, but and what I think they could have used more of was the suspense. I mean, what what you're hitting on there is is the biggest draw to this movie. And and when I first saw the trailer, I was thinking Jaws with. Uh, big naval warships, because uh, you have the the wolf pack, the Nazi wolf pack, which are their U boats. That that there was nobody matching the Nazis underwater during World War II. Took me out of it when that guy was calling them and speaking in English too. Yeah, that, that <laughs> part didn't work for me. I, but, I understand why they did it. It might have even been true, mm -hmm. but it didn't. It didn't. Work yeah, it did. It did kind of separate a little bit. But, but it, it, it sounded like something out of a uh, like out of a David Fincher crime movie or something. Like it didn't. Right. It, it, it just it, it didn't. It, it sounded like something out of a serial killer movie, and it didn't. It didn't jive with the tone of the rest of the film to me. That's all. Yeah. No. I mean, and, and not seeing them is is the. I mean, there there are scenes in stretches of the movie where you're wondering when they're going to attack or if they're going to attack, and that to me has to be played right to make it not boring. But I think that's could have been the biggest strength of this. But. Um, you know, and, and then what you men mentioned about, and it's funny coming from me because I'm the kind of guy that's always like, I don't need anything but action. Give me all action. But you have to pick and choose your types of movies. You know, if I'm watching Bloodshot with Vin Diesel, I don't need to know that he played youth soccer and was really good at it. But when you're watching a movie like this, where it is action, but it's also character driven, and you have Tom freaking Hanks in the lead, that movie should be two hours long. It shouldn't be 90 minutes long. You know, you, know, you mentioned the runtime, which is, is surprisingly short for something like this. And, um, you know, that time that was cut out was cut out of exactly what you were looking for. I, I think pretty much every movie I've watched over the last two weeks has been about 90 minutes. It's been trending down. It has. I mean, for yeah, so long. Really interesting. I, mean, I think it, the shortest movie I watched this week. Well, shit, they were all. I don't think I had anything that was over 99 minutes. And I'm fine with that. If for I'm the, fine for the with right that too. They movie. can all be that way as far as I'm concerned, as long as you do it right. As yeah. long as you maximize the time. Yeah, right? if you I can fit care, your story. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, but in this case, you can't fit your story in ninety minutes. You have to sacrifice depth of story. You have you have to just assume that Tom Hanks is a good we're, guy. We're talking he talks about to the we're talking about what real events and real you know real things that happened and mm -hmm. you know real battles. I expect a little bit more depth, right? Uh, so for a movie like this, than I do from Palm Springs. Yeah, we need more depth. Pun intended. Like essentially the same runtime, and Palm Springs right. accomplishes more. And it's 90 minutes exactly but that being said um you know i think I, I i enjoyed it fully uh i think a lot of people will i think obviously if you have apple tv your your dad plus, will your dads will like will like greyhound <laughs> your dads will love greyhound this is like this is like the it. kind of movie that your dad likes i yeah. don't care who your dad is your dad probably likes greyhound 
Yeah. <laughs> he can put the he can put the VHS when they release it right next to uh, the Outlaw Josie Wales and all that other stuff that, that right. I just watch all the time. Um, but yeah, so um, I, I you know I'm good with Tom Hanks staying in this World War II zone that he's in because he I, it's just such oh, a, we, should, we should also mention that Tom Hanks wrote the script for this. Right now, is that uh, the first time he, he he's written other no, stuff? He, he wrote the last time he wrote a script was Larry Crown. So it's been a while. That was 2011, I think. So that's it's been a while since he's written a script. But um, do, is it the first war movie that he's done? Like him and Spielberg and their um their. Yeah, I think it. I think it might be the first war script he's done. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how many movies he's written. Period. I don't, I don't know if he's written anything for TV that I don't know about, considering all the. HBO war things that he's like been producer, like at least been a producer on. Right. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I know that in terms of feature films, uh, the last one he did was Larry Crown. So, which Larry Crown was, was, was not great. Yeah, I, but, I was uh, trying to remember. I, I, I kind of think I felt okay about it, but I didn't think it was good. I, I think the best thing to come out of this, not the best thing to come out it was of this. It was, you know, Tom Hanks, no, Tom Hanks is uniquely aware of what his public image is. Mm -hmm. Larry Crown was like a movie that spoke to his, his public image. And to an extent, Greyhound is too. Yeah. I mean, Greyhound is too. He wrote a character for himself that bolsters our idea of him as uh, a fogly protector. I mean, the movie is based off the book, the good shepherd, Mm. the shepherd hurt, keeping his flock safe from the wolves. The wolves are the Nazis who are trying to kill them, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so I mean, he 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 put himself in the role that you know that we kind of expect from him, right? And that's right. fine. I got nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm just noting the fact that he wrote the script for this as well. That's it. Right. Yeah, um, <laughs> because it is such a it is such a rare thing. Yeah, um, and I, I've been trying my my computer's moving slow as shit. I was trying to pull up uh, his writing credits, but we'll just have to skip on that because it's getting late. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, Greyhound. It's it's definitely like we mentioned. It's ninety minutes, so it's it's not going to take up your whole day. And and if if you're into World War II movies, I think it's kind of a must see to the collection, just to because you don't see. You know, there's plenty of World War II uh, boat movies, but a lot of them are sub movies. There hasn't been a really good. And I might be missing something obvious, but there hasn't been a really good warship movie about World War II since the '60s or '70s, I think, when they had a bunch of them. So if if you're into that, uh, go for it. Um, Better than Midway. I'll give it that for sure. <laughs> oh, man. So um, we talked a bit about, we talked about obviously quite, quite a bit about Charlize Theron um, and how she's become this major action star. But one place she hasn't been is on comic book pages. Um, you know, she's, she's treading that water all around it. Uh, you know, being in, the, in Fast and the Furious, uh, you know, all these action movies she's got. Why hasn't she been in a Marvel movie? I don't know. Well, on your notes, you, you told me to ask that question. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I didn't tell you to ask that question. That was, that was something she had revealed this week that uh, she's never been asked by Marvel uh, to do a superhero movie, like ever. Which I was, I was sort of blown away by that. Like, I, I, in fact, I went digging through, um, like, our old posts trying to find, like, instances where she was up for a role for a Marvel, right. for a Marvel movie, and I, I couldn't really find any. Um, but she said she's never been asked by Marvel to be in a superhero movie. I just found that amazing, considering that is yeah, all her- that she's done and all that she's ac- all that she's accomplished, and all the people who have already become who have already joined Marvel that we never expected to. The only um, thing Angelina Jolie in Eternals coming up, Angelina Jolie, and that blows so, out my next thing. Is I was going to say the only thing I can think of, and this is going to go back to sounding like misogynistic pig, but it's the truth the way that Hollywood works is she is older, and they sign these. Um, they sign these uh, character contracts for 10 years. They're looking to get out of somebody. So, um, you know, she, she'll be in her mid fifties by the time her movies are, are done. But even yeah. still, that seems, a, it seems a, a stupid thing not to, cause they have to have a list and she's got to be on the list. How do you not, not and ask her? Honestly, honestly, I think they're just waiting for the perfect role. And at some point she will be in a Marvel movie. They'll ask her to do something. All right. So cast it. Yeah. Just to- totally outside of, of what um, they've announced, just in a hypothetical world, which Marvel character is she best to play? I would love to see her as like, this This won't happen because there's already another version of this character. I would have loved to have seen her as, as Valkyrie. Um, 
but not the Tessa Thompson Valkyrie, like the original Valkyrie. She would have been like, she would have been great um, as that. She could still be yeah. great as that, actually. Um, but that, that won't happen, obviously. So um, there were a fleet of Valkyrie, but yeah. It... There were a fleet of Valkyrie, but there, were, there was one particular Valkyrie. Right. For a long time. Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie didn't exist in the Marvel Universe mm-hmm. before she was on Thor Ragnarok. So right. um, just like the Valkyrie, uh, Charlie's Throne would have been great for that. I'm sure there's plenty of other things that she would have been fantastic for that I can't think of off the top of my head. Yeah, but, and this uh, is this is why I'm not a casting director because yeah. I'm stuck. She's blonde, obviously, so I'm just thinking of blonde characters. I have no vision. She's not blonde. She's not blonde in the old guard. That's true. She's not. So I always think of her as blonde. She's not that's, blonde in, in Mad Max. That's the, that's what I'm saying. She doesn't have any hair in Mad Max. But she, can change, she can change her look pretty easily compared to a lot of other people. Oh, I, really, I'm not highlighting her her lack of her silly. I'm highlighting my lack of vision that if here's, somebody's here's, blonde, here's, I can always see them as blonde. Here's, here's the question, though. I was like, Sue Storm? Sue, no. Here, here's, here's the question. Hmm. Show you Theron. Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> But no, I, th- I do think they're just waiting for the perfect role for her to come around and she will eventually do it. I don't think it has to do with age. The people that, like I said, Jolie's in there. They've had Tilda Swinton in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've had, they've, and her role was pretty action too. too. Um, right. But uh, I, don't, I, don't think they're, I don't think they're worried about that. And, and, and let's be real, Shelly Theron looks half her age. All yeah. Day, you know, she looks half her age. And regardless of how she looks, if she looks half her age, she's badass right now. Yeah, doing whatever it is she's doing. I mean, so she, there's a ton of stuff that, that Marvel, I'm sure Marvel has their eyes on something that they would love to ask her for. And that at some point it will come around. We just, yeah. just haven't gotten there yet. And then there's also the chance that she's already been asked and was just, just you know, playing mom on it. Um, I don't think she would, I don't think she would do that. Because uh, they in, in the context of this interview that she gave, it it didn't sound like that. Didn't it didn't sound like that. anything like that. She was being pretty straight up. Because she was, because she was talking about how she was, you know, she hasn't really needed Marvel. She's been able to forge her own pathway. Right. That, that was the fact that was the entire point of it. She's been able to mm-hmm. do her own thing. She hasn't needed Marvel. Um, you know, so I don't I don't think they've been asking her for anything. I think she's legit she legit hasn't been asked yet, but I, I think that will come around at some point. So sticking in the in the comic book world, um, we got Janelle Mon- Monet as Storm. Um I didn't I'm surprised see this these are the two stories you're starting off with. Well, we got the Batman spinoff to talk about as well. I thought Her you box would start off with that. Um, no, <laughs> I figured it kind of it kind of went together a little bit, but um, yeah, Janelle Monae. So uh, obviously, you know they they she um, wants to play Storm. they're She's not playing Storm. She wants to play Storm. Right, but it leads into a question of of what do they? You know, they're obviously rebooting the X Men um, after uh, the last uh, movie, uh, Dark Phoenix. But is there a chance they keep if, if somebody's really good they keep them? Like obviously Ryan Reynolds will stay the same, but they can always play that off for Joe. Well, but think they, you think they're going to keep Alexandra Ship as Storm? I kind of liked her. Storm was it was it was the first Storm that was like to me authentic to what I remember from the comics. You know, she sounded she South good. African. She sounded I mean, yeah, but she didn't do anything in the second movie and, and Dark Phoenix. She didn't no, she play. didn't. She she did absolutely nothing. She but did less than nothing. The bit she, she had. About it. She complained openly about the fact that Storm has nothing to do in the second movie. Right. Um, so I don't know. They're probably not going to keep that. They're probably not going to keep her. Well, not her that. specifically, but do, you, do do they recast everybody? I mean, I, I guess you might yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. You recast everybody except Ryan Reynolds. And, so, and, and the reason why you do that is because Deadpool, he can write he, everything. Everything that he's been through as Deadpool can be written off with a single line of dialogue. Right. Yeah. He's the only one that can break the fourth wall and do right. and basically do what he wants exactly so that's why you don't you, that's why you keep him you, you could just write it off it's so easy that it doesn't really matter right uh, uh so plus he's the one that's the most popular so why would you do it anyway but um fair enough but uh but yeah you could just write it off as <laughs> as being some sort of weird dementia or something he's going through whatever they could do whatever they wanted to uh, they could literally have him hop from a comic book page into the screen and do and everybody would just accept it but definitely. yeah well, that's the beauty of that character <laughs> is the complete and total utter. And, and the beauty of the character, plus having the exact right person to play them, that it just works with him there. So, um, all right. So we'll like go to the. Janelle, I like the idea of Janelle Monáe as Storm, though. I mean, she's a little bit, she's a little petite for it, maybe. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, 
I just want to know. Harry they... Berry's time has passed for that role. Yeah. No, his leadership was fine for the first film, not so much the second one. She didn't get to do anything. She didn't really, she hasn't made enough of an impression to hold on to that if Marvel wanted to even do that. Right. Um, you know, or maybe, you know who would be good for it? That would, that would be really interesting. Hmm. Jodie Turner Smith from um, Queen and Slim. Oh, I was so confused. I thought you were talking about uh, Cody. For some reason, the, the, the guy that played Nightcrawler, I was like, he's a dude. What are you talking about? Um, Smith McPhee, no. Uh, yeah. I'm saying <laughs> like Smith from, from, uh, from, from Queen and Slim. Right. Would be pretty good, I think, I, as well. I just want them to make sure whoever they cast is um, age appropriate to Chadwick Boseman because I, I desperately want to see that Black Panther uh, storm hookup on the big screen. I want that to play into something. I, I, I can think of worse ways to introduce storm and to introduce mutants into the MCU than to have storm show up in Black Panther 2. Yeah, because that's the other thing and is you don't need a every sort of love triangle between uh, T'Challa and. Um, uh, I can't remember uh, uh, what Pizza and Yango's character's name, but yeah. um, make a sort of sort of a tense love triangle thing going on there. Right. You yeah, know? I mean, because everybody keeps thinking of the X-Men as a group, but, I mean, nothing says they have to introduce them as a group. It can be that they're yeah. introduced across five or six different movies that come out, and then yeah. you have a group movie. Instead of Avengers, you have X-Men, and that's yeah, their group I think movie. it's just as likely when they introduce... Wolverine, I, I think it's just as likely to introduce him by himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I yeah. don't actually don't think I don't think they introduce him, and certainly Deadpool will be introduced by himself. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think they introduce the X Men as a team at all. Actually, I think they introduce them slowly. Um, with I mean, that just makes the most sense to me. There. Yeah, you introduce a person here, a person there. You you establish that mutants exist, mm-hmm. and then you worry about introducing the team. Right. I, I just, I was always, I always hated the idea of them doing some kind of crisis on infinite earth type deal in the oh, Marvel yeah. world where they all just show up and like, Oh, we're the X-Men. We're here. Yeah. No, that's, that's a really, that's a bad way of doing it. Yeah. So Gotham just ended last year. Um, and now we've got a brand new take on Batman, uh, supposed to hit theaters October 1st, um, 2021. Um, so that's a whole another year away now. Um, but on the TV world, so Matt Reeves is doing a Batman spinoff that's kind of like Gotham, I guess. Yeah, it's him yeah. and Terrence Winter, uh, writer of The Sopranos and creator of Boardwalk Empire. Mm-hmm. So they're doing a spinoff of The Batman, which comes out next year. You know, we, we, we're we thinking that the movie's probably going to be a trilogy. It probably will be. It'll probably be some sort of expansion of that universe. Um, this pretty much confirms that it will be definitely not part of the DCEU. Mm-hmm. Um, but this spinoff is is going to be a prequel, is what it sounds like. It's going to be a prequel, and it's going to be very similar to Gotham. It's going to be based on the Gotham Central comic books. Um, it's going to go into the corruption of Gotham City, basically. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. We don't know how far ahead of the Batman it is. Um, so we don't know if you could possibly see a Bruce Wayne in there, like a young Bruce Wayne or whatever. We don't know. Right. Uh, we have no idea how that's going to go. It's really early on, and so we don't know anything. Um, yeah, I just love this idea of having um, having these. I mean, because we obviously the the ground's been paved by things like Agents of Shield, but but it's never been really utilized. Which has to, been great this year, I might add. I, I I keep hearing that. I need to get back into it. I'm, I'm about this three season seasons. This season has been a lot of fun. This yeah. time travel season. Yeah. See, that scared the shit good. out of me when I heard that because I was like, oh, time travel. I mean, that's. I don't know how that's going to work, you know, and I'm, I'm fine with time travel in general, but when you insert it into the seventh season of a show, it's always questionable, but, um, it's the first season I've watched in a while. Like I haven't watched it since maybe season four or five. Oh, so you know. just jump back in or did you get caught up first? I just jumped back in. Or maybe I'll do I just that. Jump back in. I didn't watch last season at all. I knew maybe. they were facing like Chromacons or something like that. Like these robotic things. Right. Animals. But I didn't watch any of it. I don't know anything about it. I just jumped in. So maybe it. maybe I'll do that because I, I don't have time to catch up with that. But yeah, honestly, I, I don't think you need to. I don't think you, after no. watching this far of it, I don't think you need to have watched it. I mean, it's time travel already, so you're kind of starting from square one. That's true. Um, yeah. With them, so it's uh yeah, it's it's been really fun. They've been change, playing, they're doing some different things in terms of like stylistically. Mm-hmm. Um, they've been doing some different things. I love seeing Mac as the leader. I was thinking about it while I was watching it. 
I think mm-hmm. Mac's been the leader for a few seasons now. So I think even when I was watching, he had just become leader mm-hmm. of Shield. But um, I was thinking about of the characters that I would want to see if any of these characters ever made the jump to the MCU on the big screen. The ones I would want to go, mm-hmm. and I think primarily it would be Mac, uh, played by Henry Simmons. Um, I would want to see him make the jump to the big screen and like Ming Na. Like I would, and Ming Na as 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 May, Agent May. Yeah, like they're the two characters I would want to see make the jump. Yeah, um, I, I could more see so that. than Coulson. Like I don't need to see Coulson anymore. No, he, his um, his time is done. Um, but yeah. that show, the one thing about that show, and really all these shows, is that none of them felt cinematic to that level. Like if you look at uh, like Chloe Bennett and and. Um, uh, I'm looking at Chloe Bennett. Fitz, yeah, yeah, Fitz and Simmons. All this, they're, <laughs> they're great characters, but they don't feel like. So, you so here's can, here's a question. Oh yeah, Chloe yeah don't even ask it. Yes, 110. <laughs> percent um, So you, uh, they don't feel like they could cross over into the Marvel movies. Um, you could see some cross down, like you know, Lady Sif came down, and that wasn't too jarring, but. None of them felt cinematic, like you could drop them in a movie like The Avengers and say, oh, we're your backup or whatever. Um, but that's, that's just that first episode. That first episode did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give, I'll give it that. that. It had a hell of a pilot. But that's the cool thing about this, this Batman and, and simply the fact that Matt Reeves is with it and he's, he's directing the movie. I could be completely wrong. It might be totally jarring and different. But the, the idea that in the future we could have these coexisting TV shows and movies, what they've been going toward, that – the series almost act like special features, like like it it'll enhance the movies, but you don't have to watch them. And it, it's really like if this is our movie, it's a self-contained story. But if you like it and you want more of it, this follows right along with it too. You know what I mean? It's something that seamlessly goes from big to small screen, um, and so you can just have more of it. Because I mean, I think it, the the streaming is is really I get end up hurting movies a little bit in a way down the road that people are expecting more connection with their characters. They're expecting to spend more time with them. So it's really hard to get attached to a character, especially in a new movie that hasn't been a franchise in an hour and a half or two hours. You know, you don't feel the same connection you do with these TV show characters. I think that's one of the things I've liked about this season um, is that it's felt like one long movie. Yeah, that's the way to it's do felt it. Like, yeah, it's felt like they're kind of jumping around like boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. Um, it just kind of keeps going and going and going. It feels like one long movie. And I think that's... If I was going to do a show like Ages of Shield, that's how I'd want to do it. Oh yeah, I'd want to do a show like that, like not not so episodic. You don't sense. need a monster of the week. You can you can right. you can it get your little arcs just like without that. it. Like one like one long mission, mm-hmm. right? But spread out over the course of the season. That's that's kind of the way this season has been. It's been a lot of fun. Speaking of one long mission, uh, we are now ten minutes over, uh, and if we yeah. go much longer, it, it'll uh, we won't be ed- able to edit the show. So. Um, I guess we got to wrap up here. You mean you won't be able to do the show? (laughs) Yeah, you won't have to wait uh, 48 hours like usual um, to to get it. (laughs) Um, So we're going to cut here. We'll be back. uh, We'll be back next Tuesday, right? We don't have anything going on then. Next Tuesday? Yeah, next Tuesday. Next Sunday, excuse me. We got something planned. I don't know. No, I meant, I was going to say Sunday (laughs) at 2, and how's somehow that turned into Tuesday? I don't know. That's. Yeah, we'll be back. I think we'll be back next week. Maybe. Um, I'll be honest. There's so little that's coming out next week mm-hmm. um, that my, next week might be a good week to take a week off, but but uh, we'll discuss that during the week. Okay. Well, keep an eye out on the site every day to find out, Uh Travis, you want to roll down your socials? Social security uh, you number? Can, you can find me on uh, Twitter at Punchy Critic. You can find Punch Drunk Critics at PDC Movies. John is at Punch Drunk John, but he doesn't tweet or anything, so don't bother. Um you can, find, you, can find, you can find us on Facebook as well. You can find Cinema Royale there. You can find Flush Our Creeks there. You can find me on Twitch at um, cinematic underscore enforcer. And still waiting on John to make his make his stream, but he doesn't seem to want to do it. Um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, the, the whole idea about the uh, the kids being part of the show, since I don't have an option otherwise, really got me thinking about it. So I'm going to have to see how I can do that. Sure. Uh, but yeah, so all right, until next play, week, it's somebody to play Overwatch with. There you go. Um, yeah, I, I think I, I'm finally getting tired of not tired of Red Dead Redemption, I just need to take a little break from it. So maybe that's what I'll do when I get home today. <laughs>